Oh, well, hello there, Ambush. How's it going? Welcome to the Desert Tiger Podcast. I am your host here on the DTP. I am Colton G. And today on this episode of the podcast, I am joined by folk rock artist Ryan Hillier as we discuss his new album, No Excuses. Yes, we are putting our paws in the sand today with Ryan Hillier as we discuss the road that has led him to this new album, how moving back to the Maritimes after spending some time on the West Coast allowed him, opened up some doors for him to not only learn the ropes of the music industry, but to dive in, eventually leading him to produce his debut solo album, which would eventually lead on, giving him the opportunity to play in the group East Coast Love Story, eventually crafting his second album, In the Shadow of the Chapel. That was 2016, this is now 2020 with no excuses. There was a little bit of a break and Ryan even stopped playing music for a little while. So what was the decision to take that break? And ultimately, what ended up leading Ryan back into the studio to craft No Excuses? This is Orion's first album where he has the assistance of an outside producer, so what exactly did that add to the process? We're gonna dive into some of the song crafting aspects of this album, as I noticed that Ryan doesn't truly repeat any of the choruses on this album. Was that a conscious effort? We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out all of this and more today on this episode of the DTP. And it is all brought to you by Desert Tiger Merch.com because that's where you go to grab yourself something to represent the show everywhere you go. Desert Tiger Merch.com. Um, I warned you guys last episode that Tooks are going to be going out soon. And after this weekend, well, that just might be the case. So head on over there right now and cop yourself one, two, day. And now it's about time that we got the vibe right for this interview, this conversation with the Ryan Hillier, and I can't think of a better way to do it than with the first track off of this new album, No Excuses. This is Won't Get Far.
silence is complicity Your fear, your only enemy And if we give in Desert Tiger Podcast. Hello, Ryan. This is Colton from the Desert Tiger Podcast. Colton, how are you, my friend? I am fantastic today. And how are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's a beautiful day here. Where are you uh, located? I'm actually located in Kamloops, British Columbia. Cool. Well, coast to coast, here we are. Yeah, doing that Canadian connection. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, all right. Well, I'm very excited to connect today, talk a little bit about some music and your new album, No Excuses. Yeah, man, it's good to uh, good to hear from you. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Of course, I want to uh, take a little bit of the journey that gets us here, a little bit of your musical revelation. So let's take that journey. At what point do you begin performing music, and at what point do you in your heart believe that you want to go on stage, begin releasing your own tunes? Uh, well, that would have been probably when I I moved um, to Moncton here uh, back in late 2008, I think it was. Yeah, I just uh, I had been living at West for a while, and I, I moved back to the East Coast, and I, I knew I wanted to get involved in music somehow, but I wasn't exactly sure what that was going to look like until I, I got here and I just bought a guitar and I started learning how to play it and started writing some songs and then the friends that I had, you know, started to make here were all kind of in the in the music scene and got involved with a, a venue that um, became quite notable here, uh, Plan B, and started kind of getting up on stage there. I was encouraged by... Um, a friend of mine, Brock Delayette, who uh, was a drummer for a band called The Divorcees and was doing all the, the music booking there, and uh, he encouraged me to, to, to get on stage, and so that's kind of where the whole, the whole thing kind of started. Okay, awesome. So was music what drew you to Moncton then, or was that something else entirely? Well, I came here, I actually came here um, for work. I was actually... I had been living in Fredericton. Um, before that, I had been working out in Edmonton, Alberta, and I was—I just wasn't really feeling the the city. I was—I just um, I wasn't really happy out there. So I was like, um, I got a transfer with the company I was working with over to uh, back to the East Coast. I moved to Fredericton and um, was kind of doing the same work there. And I thought that that would kind of help me out, but it turns out that it was just the the same kind of thing. I was I was working in the same thing, so I needed to make a complete kind of kind of a more complete change. So I I left that job, and I a friend of mine who lives here got um, recommended me a position at uh, at Rogers TV down here, and uh, so I started working there, and and uh, that's kind of how I came to be in Moncton, for, uh, first of all. Fair, fair, all right. So once you finally, because you're in your 20s at this point when you buy your guitar, right? So yeah. from first getting onto the stage and beginning to gig, do you set your sights on doing the solo thing first, or do you try out the going for different, trying out for different bands and sort of that route yeah, I mean, I I started as a solo artist, like um, because it was just me. Like I would just be, you know, sitting at home and just writing, and and then uh, you know, going out and seeing music and just kind of get involved in the community and and just meeting people and um, just just kind of feeling everything out. And yeah, I didn't. Uh, I liked a lot of bands around here, but I definitely wasn't. Um, I wasn't really looking to join anything. I think it was more recognizing that I. I was just kind of learning, kind of learning the ropes, as it were, and um, getting you know more writing in, and and just working on 
the the foundational kind of things that I needed to know. Like I needed to know how a song works and how you know the structure works and how you know you know how to sing. And I've always liked singing and and stuff like that. But I it was putting all those kind of pieces together uh, that that kind of first few years was was about. Okay, so after you get through those first few years, you end up re- making your first release, Midnight Revelation, which you also produced yourself. So was did you learn the producing uh, aspect as you went along during that process? And what was it like to finally release your first uh, experience of yourself in the musical world? I, it was great. Like, I... Um... I think it was just an extension of kind of stuff that I had all already done. Like I had, I had experience, you know, just messing around with computers as a kid and making, you know, recording stuff on the computer and recording stuff on the tape player and, and like making beats on the computer and, and things like that. And me and a buddy of mine, we would just spend all kinds of time just sending stuff back and forth to each other and showing each, each other, uh, you know, just weird kind of electronic kind of music that we would make. So I think that acoustic, you know, music and folk music is just kind of an extension of it was it was moving into that kind of realm, just getting mics and like and recording everything yourself and playing everything yourself physically and uh, much more direct kind of messing around in a box. And uh, it was it was a really rewarding experience because, um, you know, it was just me and, and recording in my house and and in the bedroom and um just very intimate and uh yeah it was a very personal kind of album too so it it felt really good to to put that out there it just felt you know i had achieved you know what i wanted to achieve i i wrote a bunch of songs and i i released an album and i actually got to tour that album around the east coast and it was uh it was great and at that point i was like that's that's it like i was i was successful in my own in my own you know uh, goals. Everything else after that was um, it was just extra. <laughs> well, I mean, that's good that you are ca- able to achieve the things that you had set before you, and you continue to move forward in music as well. Going on into 2016's "In the Shadow Chapel," which gained quite a bit of recognition, and also spending some time with mm. East Coast Love Story. So, what was it like to sort of craft that? second album while also spending time in the band setting as well yeah that was a really busy that was a busy time and it was really it was very cool because um i was just getting to do i was getting to do you know all these different things that were an outlet for me like i got to play the electric guitar and in a band we were it was really fun like that's that's one of the most fun experiences i've ever had like playing with those guys and and also making the record was uh it was just another extension i was collaborating with a, a few more people and it was very uh just really close and personal and um yeah it was just all um it was just a lot of good feelings like the songs i was happy with those and i i was happy to kind of get to be able to collaborate with people and allow them to to have input as well like i had a kind of a sound in mind when i was recording stuff but at the same time i I wanted Nick, the the guy I was recording with, to like do his thing and then and and to put his kind of touch on it and and it was really neat and I I'm I was super happy with the uh, with the results on that and I think it showed I think a lot of people were it resonated with people and I think it was just another kind of extension of where I was moving the direction I was moving in and just kind of continuing to stretch out as a songwriter and. Uh, and to just kind of write my own kind of story through music is I have just kind of been continuing to do. Okay, so speaking about that, you sound like very happy about that time, but then you end up taking a little bit of a break. So what was the decision to sort of quietly step away from the music scene? Yeah, I mean, that that was, we put out In the Shadow, and that was, that was really great, and then uh, we just—it was such. A, it was a really busy time. Like a lot of stuff was happening. The band we were starting to tour. We did a big tour. We were playing a lot of shows, and it's. Um, I was still, you know, I still was holding a day job and and working, and so it's. And I also was um, 
in a full-time relationship and it's just like it's a lot of stuff and that you have to you know it's it's a lot of things demand your time and so it can be hard to to focus and I was also you know a lot of things go along with you know getting into the the music industry side of things and and it can be stressful and uh and it can be kind of uncertain so you know there's everybody has their coping mechanisms and so mine was was drinking and and I was kind of going back and forth on that and and so I think it was just a very uh, it was a great time but it was also just there was a lot of going on personally with me so at, at one point um you know I had left my relationship and then the band we stopped doing the band and then everything just kind of seemed to, I needed everything to kind of stop. And so I just decided to just take a, take a big breather and, uh, kind of collect my, collect myself because it was just kind of this real flurry of everything's happening, everything's happening. And then these things just kind of stop. And so I was like, okay, I need to figure out what exactly happened here and kind of just process everything. And, and so, yeah, I just, I, I made that decision to kind of take a, take break and I didn't know how long that was going to be, but it was necessary. So, uh, that's what I did. Okay. Well, that's fair. And it's probably a good thing that you did because having a lot of success can be good. But like you said, it also creates a lot of, uh, like need to do things to get out there and continue making sure that things continue to be successful mm-hmm. in such an unsure world. So when one thing falls out, it's very difficult if you're especially if you're on the road or doing other things to take care of things at home, and especially if the band falls apart and that's sort of part of your career then Yeah, yeah. Everything everything kind of happened at once, right? So I was like, All right, here's you know, and then it was just me and so I was like, I can either be okay with this, or I can see it as like, you know, a tra- you know, a, a negative, or try and, you know, turn it into something positive. So, I I decided to try and do the latter. One way 
Dagger Podcast. Okay, so from moving on from that decision to take a break, it what point and actually how long did it end up taking before finally you decided that maybe it's time to give this another go? I I wasn't it it actually didn't end up being that long. It was it was probably less than six months because I I kind of had regrouped a little bit and I had found a you know a, a new place to live and and a, you know a new living situation and so I got kind of settled in that way and things you know I was I was still working I was still doing my 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 day job and it was a great constant to have and and I was still like writing and had ideas and stuff like that in the back of my head so within a couple months really I just I took some time to kind of just reor- reorient myself and I I kind of I can't pinpoint exactly when I made the decision like you know I'm going to do this in a certain way but I just knew that I wanted to keep making music I just knew that it wasn't the it wasn't the thing to to blame for you know all this uh the stuff that had happened it was the the thing that was going to help me out and it had been helping me you know all along whether I knew it or not I made a lot of other kind of choices along that journey that were less than uh helpful but music was always the thing that was always there for me and it was always something that brought me a lot of joy and uh and contentment so I just had that realization and I was like okay I need to I I need to continue to have that in my life and and to do it in in some way I'm not exactly sure what that's going to look like but I'm going to make the decision to to keep doing it Okay, fantastic. Well, it's a good thing that you did make that decision and you start to move forward, begin demoing for the new album, which actually ends up getting produced by somebody else, Chris Kolpaw. So yeah, what was the decision to bring in another hand this time around to help craft the album? And what was it like having another uh, set of ears on this project? Oh, well, that was, it was fantastic. I mean, when we it was kind of a, a joint decision between my myself and my uh, manager at the time because I knew I was going to make the record. You know, I had the demo. I knew that I was going to put it into another space, um, do it in a pro- more professional studio, and, and I wanted to do it with uh, a band, some friends of mine, the Divorcees, and they were. I sent them you know, the demo album and were excited about it. And then... Um, and then, yeah, and then in talking about what the possibilities were, I just kind of threw it out as a, as almost not a, not as a joke, but just like, oh, I wonder if Chris would be interested in doing it. And so uh, my manager's like, I'll, I'll get in touch with him. I'll, I'll, I'll ask. And uh, yeah, he got back and he said he was interested. And I was like, great, let's, let's work, uh, let's work together on this. So that was pretty exciting because, uh, you know, I've known Chris for a long time, and and I've been a fan for such a long time, and we just kind of have the same sensibility about things, and kind of the same, uh, just the same, similar attitude. So, being able to work with him in his in his studio was uh, was really a dream come true. It's like, uh, you know, his his vision and his uh, attention to detail and his like just his his sense of fun about everything is really infectious and it's 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 great to have that when you're when you're working on music because it's it should be it should be a blast it should be fun like it should you know it, i wanted it it was challenging for me but i also wanted to have a lot of fun with it and that we definitely did you know together which was uh which was great Awesome, and you mentioned the uh, divorcees, so sort of continuing that connection of them sort of helping you get on stage the first time in your life, and now they're helping you with this new album. Yeah, absolutely, and I mean, to go in even further back, the first time I met them was when I was living out in Edmonton. Uh, I, a buddy of mine had invited me to go uh, up the street from where we were living. They were playing at a bar called The Black Dog, on like a Saturday afternoon or something. And uh, I was like, I was just excited to see people from the Maritimes. Like 
you know, living in Edmonton and there's not many opportunities I had to get to talk to people who were from home. So it was just like, hey, you guys are from the Maritimes. That's awesome. So I think it was just a, uh, it was great to just kind of connect with them in that way. And then to be able to, to hook back up with them when I moved to Moncton was, was, was very cool. And then finally to work with them on this was just another, uh, another kind of cool step. Awesome. Fantastic. So one thing that I really noticed with this album is it's a uh, strong storytelling elements. And part of that is the choruses on this album. They don't really seem to repeat themselves. Was this a uh, concentrated effort on your part? Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of funny. I, I The way that the songs kind of came out, it is very, it is very linear kind of in that way. And I kind of, I was saying this to somebody last night, it's like, I kind of like, I kind of like stuff that's not necessarily unpredictable, but a little bit unconventional. And I think that, that just kind of, I kind of always steer toward that naturally. Uh, I, I really like, you know, the conventional uh, folk style songwriting and I love those structures and everything, but I think it was more uh, just my own kind of, twist on it just not necessarily going that route i like the idea of kind of turning things in a different direction and and not necessarily being so repetitive with uh with choruses and whatnot the melodies can repeat but i like throwing in different lyrics and i think that's just a i think that's just a personal kind of taste thing for me Okay, fantastic. Well, it's sort of nice to always have that refreshing feeling with the songs, and it sounds like there's been a lot of positive feedback for this album as well, debuting number four on the Earshot uh, Country Folk Roots and Blues charts, and even that, given probably some plans and shifting releases that you're forced to go through just due to a worldwide situation. So... What has it been like to have to sort of shift the plans for this third album, and what has it been like now that it's finally out and seeing the reception for it? Oh, it's it's been really cool. I mean, the uh, obviously the everything everything changed with the uh, the pandemic and whatnot, and I, I you know it's a it's such a huge situation and and affecting so many people in a lot of ways, and I kind of felt like. Uh, when that all came on, it t- it took us a while to you know get the record completed and just scheduling challenges and all this other stuff. So I just kind of it was just kind of another uh, par for the course, I guess you would say. Where I was like, well, I mean, I we've had a lot of challenges in releasing the album thus far, so you know this is just kind of another one. So it, it actually wasn't. It, it was obviously kind of a bummer, but it was. Um, I was like, all right, it, it's it's another challenge, so let's let's roll with it and let's see what we can do. It's been uh, it's been really interesting. I think definitely there was a a few weeks where uh, I wasn't exactly sure how to navigate it, but um, during the whole lockdown thing, like I had a lot of work to do doing uh, videos and and things like that, so it really kept me occupied, which is uh, which was great. And then um, to to have it out there and you know it, it was uh, definitely kind of a cathartic uh, cathartic feeling and and then seeing you know as the as the time goes on and it gets you know more spread out there and to see the the feedback and the and the, the plays and everything it's it's been really great it just it reinforces that you know we did a good job and and um, we just made we made a good record and and people are digging it so at the end of the day like uh, that that's great all right, and it definitely uh, reinforces that returning to the um, therapeutic world of music was definitely a good decision. So maybe say there's someone out there who's listening to this who's maybe having a difficult time and maybe they have tried their hand at a craft. It doesn't have to necessarily be music and maybe they're trying to search for that thing to pick them back up would you have anything to say to that individual to help motivate them to maybe give that thing another shot yeah i I mean i would say that um all that matters is you and your relationship to whatever you want to do 
and I mean, it's it's uh, you know you hear this all the time, but honestly, as long as you're happy with what you're doing, that is all that matters, and you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do or that you feel is taking away from that. You know, whatever your involvement with that is, you should just make sure that that relationship is good. It it, it is a relationship, and uh, whatever you want that to look like, you know. Uh, you should do that. The thing that brings you the most joy and the thing that makes you the happiest about that creative outlet is that that is all that matters. Every, everything else around it, and that is your choice whether you want to become involved in trying to, you know, put it out in a into the world in a in a certain way. But um, and everybody everybody has an opinion, and you know you just got to accept that too. And but. You should just be uh, be happy with with what you're doing. All right, fantastic. So here is my last question, and it's a little bit of a change of a pace. So we mentioned the realities of you know real work and other things, and I saw that currently you happen to be uh, doing some work as a cook, as a chef, doing a little bit of creating in the culinary arts. So last question: If you had one dish to impress somebody, to really knock them off the feet, one thing that you feel is your specialty, what would that be? Uh, that's an excellent question. I am actually, like, I'm trying to work on my home cooking. I love working in the restaurant. I love doing line work. It's it's super rewarding. It's challenging every day. And uh, if I could give somebody something, it would probably be one of the dishes from the restaurant I work at, Calactus in Moncton, and... Uh, it's called the Oaxaca. It's really great. It's a deep dish kind of thing. It's with rice and veggies and cheese and beans, and it's a absolutely delicious filling, but not too filling uh, meal. So I would I would probably make something like that. Ooh, well, if anybody's ever in the Moncton area, they should definitely check that out. Do all right, Ryan. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Well, thank you, Colton. I appreciate it. Oh, and I hope that you, the Ambush, appreciated this conversation here with Orion Hillier. I hope that you enjoyed the songs that we played for you today off of his new album, No Excuses. At the beginning of the show, we kicked it off with Won't Get Far, and in the middle of this episode, we played Winding Road. And you can find... No excuses in its entirety. Yes, on your favorite music streaming service. When you're there, go ahead and hit follow so that when Ryan hits you with some music in the future, it's going to be in your hands, on your phone, in your ears as soon as possible. And that's just, well, that's the way you want it to be. And with that being said, it's now time for our final Desert Tiger Roaring Thank Yous. And the first one, of course, goes out to Ryan Hillier for joining us here to tell us all about his journey. A big old roaring thank you to Eric Alper. Last but not least, a big old roaring Desert Tiger Thank You to you, the AM, the AMBUSH, for tuning in like you always do do you guys know i have mad love for you couldn't do it without you if this is your first time checking out the podcast and maybe you want to join the ambush it is so easy it's as easy as hitting subscribe on the podcast listening service you're using right now and if you've already done that you can help the show grow still you can help it grow by reviewing the show with a big old five stars you can share this episode on your social media tag desert tiger podcast the colton g and ryan hillier when you do and you can also head to desert tiger merch.com and copy yourself something so that you can rep the show everywhere that you go desert tiger is now straight up going to be releasing two times a week we've been hitting you with random tuesday episodes for a while now well now that's going to become consistent so we're going to be bringing you more guests more variety more diversity more desert tiger and it all 
It all continues next Tuesday as I am joined by Martin Popoff as we talk about his new book, Limelight, Rush in the 80s. It is one of three books that he is releasing in the years 2020, 2021, highlighting the journey of the band Rush. And next week, we're diving into the 80s. And you can join me then next Tuesday. But until then, until then, you guys know what it is. I want you to go out there and find your mountaintop and to find your oasis, whatever it is that happens to make your heart sing to its fullest capacity. Find that thing. Find joy in that thing. Revel in that thing. Craft that thing. Grow with that thing and create something beautiful because you are a beautiful being who is capable of incredible things. And just because we don't hear it enough, I'm going to say it again. You are a beautiful being. Ing. And until next week, bye bye. Remember, there are no excuses. <laughs>